morning. Our next guest believes that oil prices will continue to ease lower. John Kilduff, again, Capital Founding Partner, CNBC contributor, joins us this morning. John, it's great to have you. Uh, I guess that would be taken as a, a welcome sign. Um, how confident are you in that call? What needs to happen to make it happen? Well, first of all, I think a lot of uh, the Middle East angst and concerns have been priced into this market. Look, I mean, Brent's hovering right around $90 a barrel, Carl. So uh, a lot's been priced in. Also, too, the, uh, the uptick in demand that we've seen from China. Some of the data there has gotten better, although there's also plenty of uh, poor data as well. So uh, that's what's uh, pushing against any further increases, in my view. So it shouldn't take much. If we can get uh, the situation between Iran and Israel to calm down here, and for a potential peace deal to finally be brokered with respect to Gaza, we should be all set here for prices to head lower just in time for the uh, driving season yeah. Memorial Day. Uh, would that allow the administration uh, the ability to afford or avoid either jawboning producers or even talking about the SPR? I do. Right. I think the administration is obviously very on top of the oil market for obvious reasons. Uh, and also, too, they um, didn't uh, want to uh, uh, sort of rattle the market with, uh, with their SPR uh, releases. One second, Carl. I'm sorry. Sure. No worries. <laughs> you still got me, John? I am here, Carl. Sorry about that. Yes. But I do think that uh, the prices should ease sufficiently that the administration can stand at uh, in terms of both you know, trying to fill the SPR, refill it, uh, and also uh, obviously not tap it and not have to jawbone all that much more. I think prices should, again, ease as some of these situations uh, come off the boil. Yeah, although, John, there is always the possibility, of course, that Israel will respond forcibly to the Iranian attack and that we will see a significant escalation. If, in fact, that occurs, what is, you know, what does that do to your forecast? I mean, no doubt about that, uh, David. We're on, the market's on tender hooks. That's why rent is at $90 a barrel right now. Going back over 100 uh, is, is, a, is a chip shot from here for sure. So I, I think we certainly rally. I mean, we saw a big buying in the crude market last week around when, earlier in the week, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, as a result of, you know, word coming into the market about uh, what, the, what the Iranians were finally going to do. So, yes, we're, we're, it's very much a cliff trade at the moment. Do we go much higher or do we go you know, somewhat lower? I think that's what we're staring down. But I think people are overreacting you know, to a degree to the situation in the Middle East. Iran obviously doesn't want to provoke an Israeli, harsh Israeli response, and the Israelis are getting pressure not to do so. So I think if you play it that way, and that's what the oil market seems to be treading water on right now, uh, steady to lower should be the uh, direction. I, I do wonder about if it's higher, if it's higher for longer, John, if the, if the duration of this conflict and war is leading to any rethink of just how long prices might stay elevated and what you're seeing in some of the forward curves around that point. Well, interestingly, the forward curve is in steep backwardation, indicating that prices in the, in the back of the second half of the year, for example, are appreciably lower than where we are right now. However, in the commodity markets, that kind of curve structure, backwardation, uh, is indicative of a tight market, of a, of a market that's what? very vulnerable to upside moves. So that's what the concern is 